Hey, I'm Andy Finch, professional snowboarder, and this is my story. I have had a ton of bad crashes, a ton of bad falls. You know, when I was traveling on competing in half pipe, quarter pipe, sometimes you're standing at the top and you're looking at this thing, it's glaring back at you because it's icy. And you're knowing how much speed you have to carry into this thing to boost. And the consequences when it's rock hard like that. Pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly. You're, just, you're freaked out. And then it's a whole different beast when you're looking down this big backcountry peak in Alaska, Chile, some crazy, you know, the Andes. There's so many big mountains around, even here in Tahoe. You're looking down this peak, it's steep, a lot of it's blind. It's a mountain, it has this like blind roll, so you, you gotta memorize your line from a, a photo that you took at the bottom, and you're kind of studying it at the top. As you go into it, you could make a wrong turn and go off a big cliff, or the mountain could rip loose and drag you off a cliff or over rocks. At that top level, you have to take risk. If you want to be at the top, you're taking risk. I had that background and belief in God, and yeah, I'd, I'd give him my life, you know, especially when I injured my knee when I was 18. That was, to me, that was a big deal. Like, I surrendered my snowboard career to Christ. And I was a professing Christian. Well, I was not an acting Christian. I was just spitting in God's face every day. I mean, if we're gonna get into where I am weak, I don't know <laughs> how much to share. I mean, I, I'm, I'm totally down with being open. What do you think, man? Well, yeah. if you don't want yeah, but you got to hear it too, and that's something we never really talk about. Is yeah, yeah, we're not looking for that at all. <laughs> well, I mean that that was my vice was being sexually active. Like I was weak, man. I just like sorry, God, I can't give this up. I just, I'm too weak, you know. So I mean, it was that was like kind of the goal on the out on tours, trying to hook up, but uh, it finally got to a point where. It led into some things that were just so gnarly, um, emotionally, physically. It just, it was overwhelming. And for the first time ever, like, all right, God, I surrender. <laughs> Take it from me. I do not have strength. I've told you that before, but I'm ready to walk away. I need your strength. And from that point on, I, I vowed to to save myself till marriage. I'd say there's three moments that really stand out in the toughest moments of my life, or maybe four. One was crushing my knee and looking like snowboarding was gonna be taken away. Possibly giving, or having to give up sex. The Olympics looking like I wasn't gonna be able to compete. Uh, and then probably the last experience was with my father when he had this crazy gnarly breakdown and, and had a ch shoot out with the police and super, didn't look like he was gonna survive. To share the story with my dad, you gotta understand what an awesome friendship, what a, yeah, I mean, he was the dream dad. I mean, just that a son could look up to. He was there for me, just guided me. Purple Heart War veteran. He was a man's man. Like he taught you how to to be a man. So yeah, my father was just an awesome dude. Really looked up to him. And then all of a sudden, something started going haywire in his brain. Doing these gnarly, weird things. My dad always had a, a real good sense of reality, and he was losing touch with it. He was starting to do things that aren't accepted in society. Whether it's like going to a dentist, and all of a sudden cussing out the dentist for no reason, walking out and not paying. And then coming home and being like, 
don't know what happened. The dentist just freaked out on me and started crying. That's his, his version of the story when we'd hear it. So a bunch of things just kept getting worse. And this was about a three week period. And it got so bad that right, I was about to fly to Europe. And 24 hours before, my mom's like, Andy, you gotta come down. This is an emergency, you need to see her. You need to see if you can help your dad. It was getting out of control. I went and spent time with him for about seven hours. And I saw that there was no control in him. Five days later, sure enough, he did something, upset a family member. They called the police, scared for family safety. And the police weren't alarmed or anything, they were just, they just were looking to pull him over and, you know, ask him a few questions. They go to pull him over, he runs, he doesn't pull over. The story goes he fired two shots, which brought him 18 rounds fired at him, seven hit him, three in the head, and the police drug him out. He died five times right there on the spot. The police kept reviving him. And then, you know, they took him to the hospital. I got the text message, like, emergency call now. Everyone's like, he's not gonna live the night. And that night, I prayed, like, God, any way possible, just let me see him again, alive, one more time. That night, I had complete peace that I would see him again alive. I mean, at this point, God's really working my life. I have complete faith in him, full trust that God can perform miracles. It was a miracle my dad was even still breathing after seven bullets, three in the head. And I mean, he was all deformed and swollen. I mean, imagine three bullets going through your face. It's pretty gnarly. I just like, we need to have a prayer vigil. Within like four hours, 200 people showed up praying that night. My dad's breathing, I mean, he, they're pumping air in him, keeping him alive. And God was answering prayers right and left, man. You know, it, it might be hard to to believe some of the stuff in the Bible. And, you know, I believe that the Word of God is, I mean, the Bible is the Word of God. But at the same time, it's easy to question that. I'm just taking someone else's word. But what I can not take someone else's word for is the way I've seen God interact in my life and the miracles I've seen happen. Dude, that's as real as it gets. And I wouldn't have seen that if I wouldn't have asked God to just be in my life, be a part of it. I'm not sure if it was the first day I saw him or a few days later. God revealed to me again that I would snowboard with him again. Which is crazy, because at that point, it's like, any doctor, anyone would be like, Andy, you're crazy that you would think that. And you know what, I did get him to snowboard again. So it's, that's a really huge blessing and really special to me to still be able to do that with my dad.